Once you've got a good base exposure, it's time to move on to color. That's because adjusting exposure affects color. Remember, if you brighten an image, colors are going to get a little washed out. If you darken an image, they may become too saturated. Let's take a look at this file here. I'm continuing to work from the previous state. Let's start with color. Saturation is going to be the overall color. And we could bring that up, although it sometimes starts to make things look a little bit artificial. Vibrance, on the other hand, saturates the areas that are less saturated. So sometimes I'll pop vibrance and tone saturation down, or go the opposite way. Bring up saturation, but tone down vibrance. And in this case, that was the right call. It brought out the red a little bit in the lighthouse, but prevented the grass from becoming artificially green. Additionally, a little bit of color contrast is useful as it richens the depth of the colors. All right, let's keep going. I'll close that. Let's scroll down a little bit here and take a look at color toning and HSL. Now, HSL makes it easy to introduce changes to specific colors. I'm going to go ahead and turn off the clipping indicators for a moment. And the thing that stands out to me is that the red of the lighthouse isn't quite right. What I can do here is dial that in using the saturation slider. I like it a little less saturated and a little darker. And that feels more in line with the scene. A deeper red that's not quite so artificial. While I'm at it, let's take a look at the hue here for the green and start to shift the green of the grass. I can make that a little bit more golden or a little bluer. In this case, a little less green, really embracing the fall colors, looks more in line. And I think that's looking pretty good. I'm going to use saturation though and bring out the blues and aquas just to emphasize the sky a bit. I like that. And as you see, using HSL, you can start to emphasize different areas. Brightening or darkening a particular area, in this case bringing up the orange slightly and the reds down, produced a little more contrast there on the side of the lighthouse and in the landscape. And then playing with the yellows here, I could really control the vegetation. That looks good. Let's darken the greens down just a little bit. What I want here is not such a vivid landscape, so I like toning that down. And we can pull down the blues a little bit, as well as bring things out. That looks great. Now, using color toning, we can further adjust the highlights and the shadows. So, in the highlights, I'm going to set this to a bluish tint and bring out the saturation. And you can see, if we take that way too far, that this allows us to dial in a particular shade of blue and then back it off ever so slightly. And that's doing a nice job of just bringing out a bluish tint in the highlights. Then down here in the shadows, we can dial in another color and I'll overdo it for a moment. Let's find an orangish sort of red. That looks good. And lower the saturation down so it's much more subtle. Now this color toning or split toning is a useful way to warm or cool the highlights and the shadows independently. And I really like that. By putting in a little bit of blue, we neutralize some of the color cast here on the lighthouse as well as emphasizing the sky. And by bringing out the reddish oranges in the shadows, it really did a nice job on the dirt and the grass. Now if needed, you could adjust the balance here to favor the highlights or the shadows. And that could be useful just to dial in the right overall mix of highlights and shadows. All right, let's compare that. Here's our before and after. And you can see that it's really bringing out details. I really like how that's coming along. Before and after. So much better contrast and color definition.